Oh my Jesus, forgive us for our sins, save us from the fires of hell. All right, as we read today, your holy Bible, chapter 7. We pray to God, amen, Jesus Christ, our Father, and the God the Father in heaven. All right, Jesus Christ the Son, the Holy Spirit, three in one, the Holy Spirit of the Bible, their words, testament of time. We will begin reading chapter 7. Book of Hebrews, Melchizedek, a type of Christ. This Melchizedek, king of Salem, and the priest of God Most High, met Abram as he returned from his defeat of the kings. And blessed him, and Abraham apportioned to him a tenth of everything. His name first means righteous king. And he was also king of Salem, that is, king of peace, without father, mother, or ancestry, without beginning of days or end of life, thus made to resemble the Son of God. He remains a priest forever. See how great he is to whom the patriarch Abraham indeed gave a tenth of his spoils. The descendants of Levi received the office of priesthood have a commandment according to the law to exact tithes from the people, that is, from their brothers, although they have come from the loins of Abraham, but he who was not of their ancestry received tithes from, Abra tithes from Abraham and blessed him who had received the promises unquestionably. A lesser person is blessed by a greater. The one case mortal men receive tithes in the other. A man of whom it is testified that he lives on. One might even say that Levi himself who receives tithes was tithed through Abraham, for he was still in his father's loins when Melchizedek met him. If then perfection came through the Levitical priesthood, on the basis of which the people received the law, what need would there still have been for another priest to arise according to the order of Melchizedek and not reckon according to the order of Aaron? When there is a change of priesthood, there is necessarily a change of law as well. Now, he whom these things are said belonged to a different tribe, of which no member ever fe ever officiated at the altar. It is clear that the Lord arose from Judah, and in regard to that tribe, Moses said nothing about priests. It is even more obvious if another priest is raised up after the likeness of Melchizedek, who has become so not by law expressed in that commandment concerning physical descent, but by the power of life that cannot be destroyed, for it is testified, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Verse 17, man, you guys, this is getting hot. This is getting powerful. Um, let's just break down what we read. So, you know, they're talking about See how great he is to whom the patriarch Abraham indeed gave a tenth of his spoils. They're talking about Melchizedek here. And in the Levitical priesthood, it says that the people received the law with need would there have been for another priest to arise according to the order of Melchizedek and not reckoned according to the order of Aaron, that there was a change of priesthood. There is necessarily a change of law. Then he whom said these things belonged to a different tribe of which no member ever facilitated at the altar. And today is a Monday, uh, Monday, February 5th, today, 2024, year 2024. I went to the WCU St. Paul Student Center. I tried to get my baptismal certificate um, to become a Milkite priest. Father Drew uh, said, Alexi, we don't have records that far back, you know, just this and that. And, giving me problems about it, but, you know, with time, Father, uh, I'm going to go tomorrow to the 8, 8, 8, um, 
8.30 a.m. or 8 a.m. I looked it up at the St. Thomas Aquinas Church with my baptismal when he was the priest at WC St. Paul Student Center in 1998 when I was born, you guys, to get my baptismal certificate as a Melkite priest, not a Roman Catholic priest because we just have Roman Catholic uh, for now here in Wichita, but like in this chapter 7 that we read today and I stumbled upon to today was a blessing because of all you know, I, I just can't believe how miraculous God has shown me in my life, how it relates. I'm just walking and living the Bible day by day, life by life. And you guys are at the, out there too. This one just miraculously happens to just align with my life. It has to be a miracle. It has to be a sign from God. And it is, you guys. I can't explain it any other way. There's eyewitnesses. The people were there. Anthony Cruzero was there watching. And, uh, Anyways, um, day by day, we have to strive because there's going to be a new altar, a new change, a new member, which no member ever, f ever uh, belonged to a different tribe of which no member ever officiated at the altar. It is clear that our Lord arose from Judah. So Jesus Christ, the Lord from Judah, Jesus Christ is like the new Melchizedek, is what they're saying. The Melkite church, the Syriac church, the Syriac rite, the Eastern rite is trying to restore back the Roman, the Bishop of Rome, for sinning like the Pope Francis, for sinning, blessing gay marriages, and taking away a holy mass from the people, traditional holy Latin mass. And he still hasn't replaced it at the Blessed Sacrament, the church that I still go to. And how, how you can't, you can't take away a holy mass from the people. It's uncanon law. It's un it's unbiblical to take away a holy mass from the people and to replace it with nothing. The devil wants you not to go to mass, not to have as many masses as possible. Christian masses. The devil takes us away from the church. What happened with the um with the um you guys know this um and Bishop Mari Mari Emanuel says it too. This uh, this scare flu, right? They took us out from the church. Not even in the black plagues in the times that the people, they had diseases, plagues, and they still went to the church in the past. Guess what Pope Francis did? He took the one time the church reunited Catholics, Orthodox, Protestants, Evangelicals, was when the devil was in and they separated the church. And the devil separated the church the people from not attending the church that is when the church finally reunited for its separation and destruction and chaos the one time was for this flu this for the vaccine oh you need to stay home you're sick lock them up lock them up get them out of the church that's what the devil wants and that's what this new World Health Organization wants. The who. Who are they? Satan. The devil. That's who. Because the devil wants to take us out from the church, from the house of God. And that's what Pope Francis, Bill Gates, George Soros, they did. And Bishop Mari, Mari Emanuel, myself, Alexi Kreit, we don't stand up for these things. We're going to say the truth even if the truth hurts. Even if the truth hurts, even if the priest sins, if the Pope sins against us, we can't We can't go against the Bible. We can't go against Jesus Christ and his holy church and his holy Catholics. You can't unbaptize a Catholic. Father Drew, even if you are the new priest, there will be a new priest in a time to come. God will seek vengeance on his merciful servants, his forgiveness of, and I forgive you, Father. I do forgive you, Father. Drew Hoffman, for your sins. Even if you don't forgive others for not sinning, myself, asking for my baptismal certificate and giving me hardships and, you know, which is, you know, it's not right to ghost people because that's when I'm a priest I'm not going to ghost a single one of my parishioners I'm not going to ban them no especially if they're Catholic every single man woman and child will be allowed in my church my Melkite church 
every single one. I'm going to rise up from younger priests' mistakes, sinful mistakes, I should say, that they act childish. And even, you know, older pre older Melkite priests, my family that's um, in Michigan, they're going to come. They built the church there, the Melkite church there, the bishops, the archbishops, the cardinals. My uh, relative, who's a retired patriarch, is going to find a home. The priests are looking for homes, the retirement homes. You know, we have to love. We have to share our land. We have to share our church with our baptized. How dare you take away a holy Catholic church from the people? How dare you? from the children of God, from baptized Catholics. Whose altar served, who did life side by side by you, never, dis never, never disobeyed God, the Father, and his house and his church. Always loved the people, loved thy neighbor, always. But you did not love your neighbor. In fact, you casted your neighbor out. You never gave them more and more and more and more chances you never gave them unlimited chances like i will in my church my melkite church when i become a priest i mean that's why even the prisoners i want to live with the homeless i want to live with the damned i want to live with the prisoners everyone will be allowed the public every single person will be allowed in the house of god every single person because the church is for the damned, it's for the sinners, and it's for the, the holy too and the righteous. And the middle ground people, we all need to share it. One house, one family. Even if we fight, we are still one holy Christian Catholic family. Or not Catholic. You don't have to be Catholic. You can be Protestant, Orthodox. There is no Catholic in the Bible. Protestant, Orthodox. There is followers of Christ, Christians, which we are. I don't care if you're Catholic, Orthodox, Protestant. If you love Jesus Christ, you will go to his church, and you will be welcomed, and he will welcome you. Not sinful priests, not sinful popes that take you out of the church for this vaccine and, and, and for this pandemic, this, uh, this uh, you know, nonsense that the devil wants to slay us, the people. And in doing this, what, this virtual mass is online? Get the hell out of here, Satan. You need to go into the church, into the house of God. Virtual masses does not replace the real experience of the Eucharist, the blood and the wine, the body and the blood of Jesus. Even today, we don't even get the wine back anymore, which is horrible. It's not right, Pope Francis, it's not right to do these things and to do these mandated orders just because what you're afraid of a little vaccine of a little pandemic of a little flu no the people the blood of jesus christ is more powerful than any disease flu pandemic it'll cure all the diseases all of them if we receive it now if we separate from it we take away the eucharist if we take away the blood of jesus if we take away the wine from the from the people if we take away them pope francis that is a sin and it will not be treaded lightly by god the father and jesus christ the son you have to forgive your sins and you have to repent you have to make it right for the people even if you forgive your sins and go to confession for it you have to undo the wrong by making the wrong a right and to never allowing it, and to always allowing it, and to going back and making the wine and giving the wine back to the people, giving the traditional Latin mass back to the people, undoing this uh, satanic baptism of, or and, and blessing the, um, I mean, not baptism, satanic, um, you know, the laying the hands on the, uh, or blessing the um, gay marriage, man-to-man -man marriage. When God never said it so in the Bible, this is Saddam and Gomorrah. Only Adam and Eve is a perfect marriage. One man for one woman only. That's the blessed holy marriage. No other marriages, Pope Francis, none. No man-to-man -man marriage. There's not Adam and Steve. It's Adam and Eve. 
there's no gay marriages and no lesbian marriages. This is Saddam and Gomorrah all over again, and God punished the people for doing this. And he punished the popes and the priests for good. He will. You'll see. And I, But I leave my vengeance to God. God will ultimately do the vengeance for me. And for the people on earth, he'll, for his children of God, for his holy servants, which I am. Alexi Corinthia, and all of you guys are out there too. I know you guys are. Okay, here, it, here we go. For it is testified, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. On the other hand, a former commandment is annulled because of its weakness and useful, uselessness, for the law brought nothing to perfection. On the other hand, a better hope is introduced through which we draw near to God. And to the decree that this happened, not without the taking of an oath, for others became priests without an oath, but he with an oath through the one who said to him, The Lord has sworn, and he will not repent. You are a priest forever. To the same degree has Jesus also become the guarantee of an even better covenant. Those priests, there are many because they were prevented by death from remaining in office. But he, because he remains forever, has a priesthood that does not pass away. Therefore, he is always able to save those who approach God through him, since he lives forever to make intercessions for them. It was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, higher than the heavens. He has no need, as did the high priests to offer sacrifice day after day first for his own sins and then for those of the people he did that once for all when he offered himself for the law appoints men subject to weakness to be high priests but the word of the oath which has taken after the law appoints a son who has been made perfect forever that son is jesus christ you guys now, it's saying, look at what's saying. There's sinful priests out there. The office of the priesthood. The priests, they have, we have sins of the flesh. We're humans. We can't be like Jesus. Perfect and pure. Now we can strive to perfection and not do the sins over again. And to make, up, make the wrongs become rights. Make our goods become better and our better, become, betters become best. Now, look at what it says here. Jesus is the Son of God who made perfect forever. Okay. So, saying here is that for the law appoints men subject to weakness to be high priests, but the word of the oath, which was taken after the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. Okay. Now, this reminds me too. Um, Okay, so a high priest offers sacrifice day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. He did that once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints men subject to weakness to be high priests, but the word of oath, of the oath. So this is the word of God. The Holy Bible says that there shall be a son who has been made perfect forever, who will appoint and take the throne, the priesthood, Melchizedek, and then Jesus Christ, God the Father. And Jesus, this is Melchizedek, uh, I believe this is Melchizedek talking here, that's saying, or the book of Hebrews, it was the first, uh, or the person, uh, you know, speaking highly about Melchizedek here in this chapter, whoever wrote this chapter 7 book of Hebrews, this part here. But it's all divinely inspired by the Holy Spirit. So it is the Holy Spirit's, this is the word of God, this is the breath of life, this is the word of God, the testament of time, you guys. This is Jesus Christ's word, this is God the Father's word, this is the Holy Spirit. This is the Trinity. This is everything, is the Holy Bible. 
this is life. The Bible is life. It is the instruction book to, to life, I like to call it. So, and this reminds me too of what Father Pat York was telling me. He's like, Alexi, even you can abuse blessings. I mean, abuse a blessed item, like a blessed motorcycle we were talking about. My blessed motorcycle by Father Yorok. You know, because at the time I was doing Senzu, I was doing wheelies on it and stuff. And now I, I, I don't do it anymore because Father, after Father Pat York, what he said, it's wrong. He, he was right. The day after that, you know, I got slayed, you guys, by the devil too. And uh, I had to be shown a lesson. I was going to daily mass. I was like, I was strong. I was hot for God. So strong for God at the time. That's when the devil gets you the best, the best you guys. That's when the devil wants you is when you're strongest for God. You're near a soldier for God and so strong. That's when he tries to break you, the devil. But God, ultimately, your Holy Spirit within, your good guardian angel within, vanquishes the devil. Sin has a toll on our life for the better. But when we vanquish it, and we vanquish it forever, like I have been now, waking up all these years and living my life, this life of sin, of fleshly desires, I have now finally opened up my eyes and realized the truth and the light and the salvation to vanquish the devil and the sins from my life. And it feels beautiful, you guys. Especially when, like, I want to go to the most holy, holy, holy high priest, the high priesthood like Melchizedek here in the Bible, the Melchite priest, to become a priest for the people to spread the good news all the days of my life. That's what I found and through my baptism. That's what I found is, is, is the best in my life. I, I don't want any other life, you guys. I will go for this dream. I will push this dream and make it into a, a real, reality and a salvation. Because I had the vision of God in the middle of the night. He called me to build this Melchite church. He called me to do this Bible in the year reading and, and to build the Holy Sabbath church, you guys. And like a Mother Teresa, like a Padre Pio movement, we will raise the funds to build a church, just like St. Francis did in the past you know, St. Peter, on this rock you shall build this church. And on this rock, in my baptismal home, in this Wichita, Kansas, I shall build a church too. And with your guys' help, with you got the Father's help, with Jesus Christ's help, the Holy Spirit's help, we shall build the church on this rock and make it our home. Our home. For God. Ultimately, for God and Jesus Christ. We have to. Not for me, Alexi Craig. Not for any other priest out there. But ultimately, it is the house of God. The church is for the people. Not for me, not for you, not, not for anyone out there. It's for everyone out there. Not one, two, five, ten people. Not to ban people here and there willingly. No. The homeless are allowed in my church. The prisoners that everyone will be allowed. Everyone. No one will be banned. All right, chapter 8. Heavenly Priesthood of Jesus. Oh, yeah. We'll begin that tomorrow on Tuesday. Uh, February 6th will be tomorrow. Today is February 5th, Monday. But, uh, yeah, I just... It's reminded me... Oh, yeah, of the... He's like, Alexa, you can't be... Uh, even you can abuse a blessing, a blessed holy item, a religious item. And he's right. You can, Alexi, even bless the priesthood. There's bad, sinful priests out there that they abuse their blessing. Like, I'm now realizing it. What he was saying, it, it goes always. Like, the priests, they can even bless the gay marriages. They can do the bad sins. Like Pope Francis. Even you can bless, you know, your own priesthood. You can abuse the power. You can abuse it. And that's what they did, the Pharisees did to Jesus Christ. The most innocent man in the world. They crucified him. His own Christians. They persecuted him. Like, I'm being persecuted out there. I'm getting banned, slayed for you guys. Like Jesus did. Not that I'm Jesus in any way. I look like him, but the Holy Spirit within me talks like him. The Holy Spirit is talking this way through me, guys, to explain this to you. Jesus Christ, his body and flesh are just trying to reach the with the goodness of the holy spirit and the light trying to reach and to let out my story my life because i'm being persecuted i'm being slayed like the saints they did in the past like jesus christ did you know 
Alexi Crate here, I'm getting banned. You guys are getting banned out there. Every one of you out there are getting, have sins and have a redemption story. It's a redemption story of the Holy Bible. That's what Father Seth was saying at the Mass on Sunday. I was just le listening to his virtual homily. He says the Holy Bible is a redemption story and we share our redemption story. Redem redeeming ourselves against sin, against the devil. Redeeming ourselves with who? Jesus Christ, God the Father, the Holy Catholic Church. And we can abuse our power, right? You guys, in baptism, even I, Alexei Crate, I can abuse my power. Bishop Mari Mari can abuse his power. Pope Francis can sin and abuse his power. Father Drew Hoffman can abuse his power too. We all have, in a way. But we need to be all working together as a family to forgive one another, to love one another, and to make the wrongs, rights, to make up for our amends, to forgive our sins, and to love our enemy as the church loves us. Love thy enemy, love thyself as thy enemy. Love thy enemy as thyself. Love thy neighbor, love all neighbors. Love, love prevails. God bless. I'll close in the prayer in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. God, help us to love thy neighbor. In your name we pray. Okay. Peace, you guys, on Wednesday.